So welcome back everyone, Triple M here. In today's video, we're diving into developer options, going through every single setting in your developer option, explaining what they are. That way, if you want to tinker, you have free reigns to go ahead and make those changes. Now, this is going to be compatible for your Chromecast with Google TV. It's also going to be compatible for your on 4K streaming devices, your Nvidia Shield devices, as well as most Android devices and phones that's out there. So we're going to jump right into it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Let's go. So today I am doing this on my new on 4K Pro. This might vary a little bit depending on which streaming device you're using, but first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enable developer options. And again, this is gonna be similar for your Nvidia Shield, but remember that this is a Google TV device that we're working with. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your settings, gonna click on it, you're gonna go all the way down to system, you're gonna click on about, and you're gonna scroll down a little bit and you're gonna hover over the build number. Now, while you're on the build number, what you wanna do is just tap the select button seven times and you should see different messages. This letting you know that you are en route to becoming a developer. So one, two, three, you can see you're four steps away, four, five, six, seven, and you are now a developer again. This will be really similar for your NVIDIA Shield TV. If you go over to the build number, do the same thing. It should enable developer options for you. Now, once you do that, you're gonna hit the back button and you're gonna scroll down a little bit. And now you see the developer options right there. And we're gonna go ahead and select it. So a lot to cover here. So let's go ahead and we'll start with stay awake. So stay awake is pretty self-explanatory. Turning this on will prevent your device from going to sleep. So it's gonna prevent your Chromecast, your on 4K streaming pro from going to sleep. So this is an option if you wanted to set this up as signage or you just want to show the, the slideshow continuously, then you can go ahead and turn this on. Next one is gonna be enable Bluetooth HCI Snoop Logs. Now, you can see you have two options there, disable, enable filtered, or enabled. So what this does, this saves all your Bluetooth HCI packets to a file stored on your SD card. And I'll go ahead and put the path number, which then can be opened with a tool like Wireshark, and you can use that to troubleshoot your Bluetooth data. OEM unlocked, look like I'm not allowed to select that, but just so you guys know, this is required when unlocking the bootloader, but it's not the only step for unlocking your bootloader. This option does not appear on all device, so you can see it is there, but I cannot select it on this new on 4K device. So moving on to the next one, picture color mode. So this switches your device, so if you turn it on, Nothing seamlessly happened, but this basically switched your device to use sRGB color space, which used to be helpful in the days before most devices uses sRGB by default. So nowadays, this switch usually doesn't have much effect, as you can see as I just turned that on. Going down, we're going to go down to USB debugging. So USB debugging, it's going to give you a little pop-up. USB debugging is intended for development purposes only. Use it to copy data between computer and your device, install apps on your device without notifications, and read log data. So pretty much what it says there. So this can also be used to siloed apps, change system settings with commands, grant permissions to apps, and more. However, some applications and games refuse to launch if USB debugging is enabled. So keep that in mind. We're gonna go ahead and cancel that. And we're gonna go down to revoke USB debugging authorizations. So connecting the device for the first time, this option revokes all ADB authorizations, which can be helpful if you don't have access to some of your computers you may have used in the past. All right, we're scrolling down. Select mock location allows users to set GPS location for testing. This app is gonna spoof location information by GPS and network, and many free apps in Google Play Store exploit this setting. So popular GPS spoofing apps include iSpoofer, any two and fake GPS location. So again, if you're someone who really gets under the hood, that might be the option you wanna play with. But for me, I'm just gonna leave this one alone. Next one is gonna be enable view attributes inspection. So we're gonna click that on. You can see it did do something, but no telling what it did. So this allows you to inspect views in applications using the layout inspector in Android Studio, which can come in handy for some developer apps. 
Scrolling down to select debug app, click on that it's gonna ask you for an app to select. So this option allows you to select a debugger, a debugger application that can be initialized before a given app configured with wait for debugging option. So this is if you doing some testing and you want to select a specific app, that option is there. All right, so you can see nothing is selected. Because nothing's selected, I can't do the wait for debugger or verify apps over USB. Basically, those are pretty self-explanatory debugging applications, wait for debugger. And the other one uh, checks apps installed via ADB slash ADT for harmful behavior. So those options I can't select. Going down to the logger buffer size. Um, so you can see the default there is 256K. So logger buffer size, this changes the maximum file size for the logger, also known as a low cat. A longer buffer can show older activity while a shorter buffer can contain logs for recent activity. Next, we're going down to the networking side. So this, of course, one of my favorite areas. <laughs> the first one is gonna be wireless display certification. Used to enable to cast your device screen to any TV or monitor that supports Miracast, but Google ripped out the code a year ago, essentially, and now it's own Chromecast standards, so the toggle doesn't really do anything on most devices. So we can always turn that on and off, but not gonna really do anything. Enable Wi-Fi verbose login. So this is gonna show the signal strength indicator or the RSSI on each network in the Wi-Fi settings. So the RSSI can tell you the strength of your given Wi-Fi, but apps like the Wi-Fi Analyzer usually does a better job. So if you turn this on, let me go out, and I'm gonna go to my settings. I'm gonna click on the Wi-Fi. And you can just see this one, for example, and I have to blur a lot of this out. This shows a lot of information, um, not just the name of the network, but the RSSI, the RX, the TX. So a lot more information there. And if you're someone who really um, is troubleshooting or you just kind of like this view, that option is there for you. Let me go back. Let me go ahead and turn it off. Next one is going to be mobile data always active. So by default, Android shuts off your mobile data connection whenever you're on Wi-Fi because keeping both connections alive essentially is going to drain your battery. So this option uh, reverses the behavior, which might be helpful if you don't want to wait for LTE or 5G to reconnect. Mobile data always active, pretty self-explanatory. Select USB charging. So just going through this video, a lot of options here that I didn't really think about, and this is gonna be one of them. So this changes what mode is used when you plug your device into a computer or into a USB hole. So most devices have no data transfer, which you can see mine is set to charging as a default. If you're consistently transferring files over USB, for example, you could set this to file transfer. So you can see you have two options there, media and picture. Um, and you also have an Ethernet option and a MIDI. So it's some things that I have to play with. And that way you can avoid selecting it each time. Like when you plug in your device to a computer, you have to go in and select what option you want to use. So pretty cool. Now show tap. So this is more for your, your phone. So this is essentially is going to show a, a point on the screen wherever you tap it with your finger. So if I was to turn this on and maybe I had a pointer. And let me go ahead and plug that in and see if that works. All right, so I have a pointer here. And it looks like that's not going to work for my... Um, <laughs> for this device but essentially this will work for your phone so, so if you have a mobile phone you tap anywhere on the screen you're going to see a little highlight there where you tapped pointer location so this is similar to the show test but this displays the actual coordinates of the taps at the top of your screen so if i turn this on if you look up top you can now see i do have coordinates so let me go ahead and try this again let's see if i tap right here all right, so you can see it is showing the coordinates, which is pretty cool. Something to, to be aware of. Not sure how this will be useful, especially in this application. So over the drawing, we have the show surface indicate. So this flashes the entire screen when anything changes in the current application. So this can be useful for debugging apps. But if you're sensitive to motion, probably want to leave this one off. Show layout bounds. This option shows a grid light layout on elements, making it easier to see the margin areas on certain elements. Again, this is really only helpful when you're doing developer stuff. Let me go ahead and turn it off. All right, we also have force RTL. This forces all text to be displayed as a right to left, even if the current language is set from left to right. That is weird. Okay, I guess that's, that's not too bad. Just, it's still written where you can actually read it, but it's just weird seeing everything in reverse. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. 
All right, now to some of our favorite settings. So we do have the window animation scale. We also have the transition animation scale and the animator duration scale. So these three options change the speed of most animations in Android. So setting them to values like 0.5, you can see by default they're at 1x, but if you set them to 0.5, for instance, everything seems to transition a little bit faster. And I've done a dedicated video on this, but uh, just if you're playing with these settings, just remember what they're on. Most of the times they're going to be at 1x, but if you go lower to 0.5, it's going to react a lot faster, just making your device seem like it's going a lot faster. Simulate secondary displays. Now this is gonna simulate a monitor connected to your Android device with the result displayed on the translucent layer on the top screen. This can be helpful when testing applications that responds to external monitors. So let's see if we can break this thing. Okay, so you can see up top, top left, kinda shows everything in a mini display and that's in 1080p. So if I went to 4K, Curious to see what that would look like. I guess it's just an overlay of what I currently have. 480p, it should be a lot smaller up top. Okay, so pretty cool. I wouldn't use it. <laughs> but again, if you're a developer trying to see how certain things look, um, this might be something you want to look into. Show windows view updates and show hardware layers. These are similar to the above mentioned show surface update settings. No reason to use them unless you're a developer testing an app, but um, let's turn them on and see what happens. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm able to do this so you guys don't have to. <laughs> that way, if I, if I kind of screw something up, you'll know which one to stay from. Uh, debug GPU overdraw. This is a tool used as color coding to show the number of times your app draws each pixel on your screen. And I'm kind of scared to turn this one on, but. Yeah, that looks kind of weird. <laughs> Let me go ahead and turn it off. Just a lot of options. Again, if you're a developer, this might be something that you use just to kind of test everything. Debug non-rectangular clip operations. Uh, this turns off the clipping areas on the canvas to create unusual non-rectangular canvas areas. Let's turn that on. That looks like it did nothing. So did that. And we're gonna move on to the next one. Force Forex MSAA. This forces multi-sample anti-lazing in all apps using OpenGL ES 2.0. That just doesn't seem like something I'd be interested in. Disable hardware overlays. So hardware overlays allows apps to display something on the screen to use less processing power. So without the overlay, an app shares the video memory and has to constantly check for collisions and clip in to render proper image. I wouldn't mess with that option unless you have a good reason to, but it is there even though nothing is really noticeable at the moment, but you can toggle it on and off. Simulate color space. Uh, this can switch display colors between a few different modes, including monochrome options. So let's get in. That is weird. It's the green. And Triton normal blue yellow. All right. So safe to say we're going to go ahead and disable that. Disable USB audio routing. So this is gonna prevent Android from automatically using newly connected USB audio devices such as headphones, adapters, or USB headset. Might be helpful if you want to plug in a device and offers the audio, but do not actually want to use the audio part. Like a, so for instance, if you wanna use like a dock or an adapter, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, down to the audio, so record audio. So you can turn this on to start immediately recording audio. All right, time to start. You can click on that. It says 18 milliseconds, but um, curious to where this actually ends up. Let me stop it. Okay, so it actually started recording right away. You can save the audio. You can play the audio. So it gives you a lot more options once you actually record it. Let's, that's pretty cool. And next we're gonna have the strict mode enabled. So this is a tool for developers to monitor accidental storage or network access on an application's main thread. And again, you can go ahead and turn it on and off. It looks like it's gonna flash screen when apps do not do long operations on the main thread. Profile HWUI rendering. This is a way to monitor GPU activity on your device, though it isn't too helpful outside of testing applications. Now enable OpenGL traces, a uh, couple options in there. You can see you have none, low cat, 
SysTrace, CallStock, or GL get error. Now this feature allows you to capture GL problems, specify the log file for OpenGL to use for tracing errors. Again, developer thing. Over to your apps. Um, these are pretty self-explanatory in my opinion, so don't keep activity. So destroy everything as soon as user leaves the app. Pretty straightforward, you can turn it on and off. Background limit process. So this one I find very interested. Not sure what the standard limit is. Um, but that's what's set currently. But you can specify how many apps you want to run in the background before it essentially kills it. So right now, set to standard, but you can change it to no background processes, which means that after you leave every application, it's going to pretty much kill it in the background. And this could help with performance of your device. But you can also set it to one all the way through four applications. Pretty cool. So show background ANRs, enable this will show app not responding message for apps running in the background. In addition, the default behavior for showing them for frozen apps on your screen. All right. And last couple, we have the standby apps, uh, force allow apps to external. So for anyone that's trying to adapt storage or just put storage on a device, let me read this and let me know what you guys think of this settings. Android apps can choose whether or not they can be they can be installed on external storage. Changing this and moving unsupported apps to external storage could cause strange behavior, so it's probably best to leave it alone. But it seems like with this, um, you can essentially force allow apps to, to be installed on your USB drives, potentially any other drive that you have on your device. I know even with the Fire TV stick, um, when you adapt storage, certain apps can't be installed on external storage. So this is a pretty cool option. And the last option here is gonna be force activities to be resizable, which means that they can be fixed for apps that don't work in split screen mode or can't be resized on certain devices. So. Just a ton of options here. I know this this video kind of went on, but you can see it's a couple dozen options. We went through all of them, but I've often gone through these options and just wondered what can be used, what can be useful, but hopefully this video helped. Again, this is demonstrating on my new on 4K Streaming Pro, but again, if you have a Nvidia Shield, it's gonna have the same settings. If you have a Chromecast or Google TV, it's gonna have the same settings. Even if you have a TiVo Stream 4K, these settings are gonna be under developer options. So drop your thoughts in the comments, let me know what you guys think. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.